Hello, plant fella. Welcome to Uvanisca El Floro, where the rare, the wild, and the remarkable plant stories are brought to life. Today, we invite you deep into the lush and mist-laden montane forests of Papua, Indonesia, where a little-known member of the Matesi family quietly thrives, Octometus glamorata. Let's get started. Octometus glamorata belongs to the family Metaceae, a group famed for its aromatic foliage and ecological importance in the tropics. Unlike its more famous relatives like Eucalyptus or Syzygium, Octometus remains in the shadows, rarely discussed, rarely seen, and rarely cultivated. The genus name Octometus reflects its floral structure, often with eight stamens and features that echo the ancient botanical traits of the myrtle lineage. This elusive species is primarily endemic to the highland rainforests of Papua, Indonesia and possibly parts of tropical northern Queensland, Australia. It favours montane environments between 1,000 to 2,500 metres above sea level, where mists shroud the forest daily and biodiversity thrives in layered canopies. These ecosystems are ancient and fragile, nurseries for endemic flora like Octometus glomerata. One of the most astonishing features of Octometus glomerata lies not in its flowers or fruit, but in its foliage. Unlike most members of the Metaceae family, Octometus glomerata can produce enormous leaves, some reaching up to two meters in length. These gigantic leaves are long, elliptical, and arranged oppositely on the stem, forming a dramatic presence in the shaded understory. They serve a crucial role in maximizing light capture in the low-light conditions of montane forests where sunlight filters through multiple canopy layers. As with many myrtles, Octometus plays a quiet but vital role in its ecosystem. Its fruits feed birds and small mammals, which in turn disperse its seeds. The tree's mycorrhizal relationships with soil fungi aid nutrient cycling in nutrient-poor forest soils. These interactions make it an important yet understated actor in forest resilience. But one of the more intriguing aspects of Octometus glamorata lies in its pollination ecology, which remains largely undocumented. Given its floral structure and faintly sweet fragrance, it's speculated that small insects like bees or beetles may be the primary pollinators. Some local reports even suggest moths may play a role during the twilight hours. This opens up a fascinating avenue for further field study, especially considering the tight-knit relationships many Metaceae form with their pollinators. The presence of extrafloral nectaries, if confirmed, could mean the species even has defensive symbiosis with ants. Despite its potential, Octometus glomerata remains virtually absent from botanical gardens and private collections. Why? One reason is its remote habitat many known populations exist in areas that are hard to access, sometimes requiring helicopter entry or long treks through mountainous terrain. Another factor is its sensitivity. Being adapted to cool, humid, shaded environments, it doesn't tolerate hot, dry conditions well. And of course, there's the lack of seed availability. A Juvenisca L. flora, we're fortunate to have access to cultivated specimens and we're working toward propagation and responsible sharing with those truly passionate about conservation horticulture. Though often overlooked in major botanical literature, species like Octometus glamurata offer deep insight into the evolutionary history of Metaceae in the Southern Hemisphere. They represent ancient lineages that once formed part of Gondwanan forests, tying together floristic threads between Australia Papua and Southeast Asia. In this light, cultivating or conserving Octometus is not just an aesthetic or scientific pursuit, it's an act of preservation for a vanishing ecological legacy. Very little is known about the exact population status of Octometus glomerata. Its habitat is under growing threat from logging, agricultural expansion and mining in Papua, Indonesia. Because of its rarity and limited range, it may qualify as data deficient or near threatened. This lack of data, however, 
is precisely why it deserves more attention, both from conservationists and collectors who value botanical diversity. Can Optometus glomerata be grown outside its native habitat? The answer is, with care. It requires cool, humid conditions, filtered light, and highly organic, well-draining soil, conditions similar to cloud forest floors. For collectors, it represents a rare gem still largely absent from global botanical collections. Its compact growth and attractive foliage make it a potential candidate for specialty gardens, especially in highland greenhouses or temperate conservatories. So, whether you're drawn by its rarity, its ecological role, or the challenge of cultivation, Octometus glamorita is a species worth knowing, growing, and protecting. Here at Juvenisca L. Flora, we're proud to document, explore, and, where possible, offer seeds or insights to fellow conservation enthusiasts and botanical collectors. If you're interested in learning more or wish to inquire about seed availability, visit our website at uveniscalflora.com or contact us directly via WhatsApp or email. Let's grow knowledge together, one rare species at a time.